Uh, good morning, NFC East. This is your guy, Tone the Shield for the second. Man, oh man. Wow. We're here. Super Bowl week. So much to discuss with you guys. First and foremost, I appreciate y'all for locking in on the content, man. I'm filling in for my guy, Jeff Kerr. He's in Arizona right now in Glendale, to be exact, holding it down for CBS Sports and Jacob Sports, getting the getting the inside scoop on all things Super Bowl 57. And y'all know I'm going to hold y'all down. Y'all know I had to come in and just continue to keep that energy high because that's what we do here, right? This is what we do here at Jacob Sports. We're going to continue to pr provide you guys top-notch content. We're going to continue to feed you guys. We're going to continue to just continue to keep the pressure on, especially with the Philadelphia Eagles being in Super Bowl 57. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Now, me personally, I had a feeling it would be good, but I didn't know they would be this good. You know what I mean? I knew Jalen Hurts would be good, but I didn't know Jalen Hurts would be this good. You know, you know, you had some people who had that blind faith. People who just say, I knew Jalen would be the MVP or I knew we would be in the Super Bowl. I, I knew. And I can't really argue with those people, but so much because when you think about all the moves Harvey Roseman made in the offseason, it just makes perfect sense, right? When you saw him trade for A.J. Brown, you saw him bring in Hassan Reddick, you saw the draft choices he made. Uh, you saw him go for James Bradbury, C.J. Garner Johnson, all the moves he made, Kaiser White, you know? And then he doubled down and went and got Linval Joseph and Indomitian Sue prior to the Colts game. You saw all the moves, and that led you to believe this team is going for it all. And I believe all the moves indicated that they were going for it all, but most importantly, all the moves indicated how much faith Harry Roseman and this organization, Jeffrey Lurie, it indicates how much faith they had in Jalen Hurts. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Once again, you guys are locked in on Good Morning NFC East. And if you're just joining us, I'm filling in for my man, Jeff Kerr, who's going to be holding it down in Glendale, Arizona, covering the Philadelphia Eagles for CBS Sports and J. Kip Sports as well. So you guys have you guys have me for the whole week. We got some special guests coming up today. We have Mark Farzetta. Is going to be coming in around that 720, 723 minute mark. And then tomorrow, we're going to have Clay Harbor coming in around the same time. Former Philadelphia Eagle, tight end that played this game. And then to end the week, we're going to have someone that I think does a really good job of reporting on the Eagles. Philly Philly the Podcast, Joe Castro from Philly Philly the Podcast and Fan Field Sports. So make sure you guys continue to lock in all week. The content is going to continue to flow. Obviously, Burge 365 is today with Jody Mack and John McMullen. Sports take with those guys, the National Football Show. Like I said, Jacob Sports has you covered. We're going to continue to give you guys advanced coverage. We're going to continue, we're going to continue, we're going to continue to give you guys top-notch coverage when it comes to your Philadelphia Eagles. Because moments like this don't come often. They don't. The reality is. A lot of teams don't make it to back-to-back -back Super Bowls. A lot of teams don't get the opportunity to play for two Super Bowls in a five-year span. It's just not common. But when you think about what this Philadelphia Eagles team is, and you compare it to previous seasons, previous years, there's nothing common about this Philadelphia Eagles team. There's nothing common about Jalen Hurts as the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, you have a lot of people who – still aren't really believers in Jalen Hurts. A lot of people who still struggle to believe that he is the guy because they harp on the way the quarterback position has been played in decades past. There's more than one way to play this position. There's more than one way to lead. There's more than one way to win. And regardless of how others may feel about Jalen Hurts being the MVP candidate, regardless how they may feel about Jalen Hurts being in the Super Bowl, Regardless how they may feel if this roster is elevated, Jalen Hurts, the bottom line is he's winning. The numbers tell you he's winning. Say what you want about passing yards. Say what you want about accuracy or touchdowns. Say what you want about rushing yards or whatever. The bottom line is the, the, the numbers that matter the most is the win and loss column. 
And on the season, Jalen Hurts has led this team to a 16-3 and three record. Now, when he played, he led the team to a 14-1 and one record during the regular season. 14-1. and one. He, didn't, he only lost one time this year. He lost to the Washington Commanders. We all know how and why that happened. But Jalen Hurts, in and of himself, has led this team to a 16-1 and one record. Gardner Minshew, 0-2. So when you really think about those odds, the Philadelphia Eagles have a 16 out of 17 chance to win this game. Now, this is not going to be an easy game, right? We talked about this. The Kansas City Chiefs, they're top-heavy, but they're top-heavy in all the right places. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback in the NFL. I don't think that's a debate. I'm sorry. I can't, I, I'm. I, I don't think. I don't think Joe Burrow is on his level. I don't think. I don't think Josh Allen on his level. I know a lot of people say, "Well, Joe Burrow beat him two or three times, and Mahomes only beat him once." The results are the results, though. Patrick Mahomes had to let Joe Burrow know his levels to this thing. But nonetheless, Jalen Hurts versus Patrick Mahomes. This is a matchup that we deserve. Again, it's also a matchup that a lot of people really didn't see coming because of how they saw Jalen Hurts. And sure, Jalen Hurts may not be the talent that Patrick Mahomes is. But the reality is, he's winning. And last time I checked, like I said, the win-loss column is the only stat that really matters at the end of the day. A lot of people say Jalen Hurts didn't play well in these playoffs. He's been struggling. Why? Why has Jalen Hurts been struggling in the playoffs? The deep ball isn't connecting. Well, obviously, I think I think he's dealing with something with the shoulder. That's just my thought. I think he's still, I think he's still dealing with some lingering effects of that shoulder injury. I think he's still trying to get the, you know, I, still, I think he's still trying to get his touch back. But these two weeks are going to be crucial for this Eagles team. Like I said, this Eagles team is special, and they have all the makings of a Super Bowl champion. Now they have to put it all together. And when you come this far, when you put in the amount of man hours they have, you can't go home empty-handed. You just can't. When you have a guy like Hassan Reddick dominating his matchups, you can't go home empty-handed. When you have a guy like A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, been dominating all year, you can't go home empty-handed. The Eagles DBs, Bradbury, Slay, C.J. Garner-Johnson, all those boys, Epps, when you when they grind this hard, you cannot go empty-handed, go home empty-handed. When you put up 70 sacks on the season, you cannot go home empty-handed. It can't happen. You know, I'm, call it blind faith, but... Are you guys, and again, I need to find out how you guys feel about this, right? Am I wrong or am I tripping to be this confident in the Philadelphia Eagles knowing who the opponent is? I need to know how confident you guys are in this game because the odds makers say the Philadelphia Eagles are the favorites. But I'm not taking that bait. As confident as I am about the Philadelphia Eagles, I firmly believe the majority of people covering this game expect Jalen Hurts and the Eagles to fumble the bag and expect Patrick Mahomes to do magical Patrick Mahomes things. And I understand it. Patrick Mahomes has the track record. But if we're being honest, when it comes to the big game, the Super, the Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes hasn't really played well in any Super Bowl he's played in. I know he had that dominant fourth quarter, that magical fourth quarter, or that magical second half in his first Super Bowl win. But when you really dissect it and look at it, Patrick Mahomes has struggled on the biggest stage, but has come through when it matters most. But here's the difference. The Eagles aren't the 49ers. They aren't choke artists like the 49ers. They aren't choke artists like Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo. That's not how they play football. The Eagles have not choked away a win 
or choked away a loss, however you want to slice it. They have not choked away a game all year. They haven't. All their losses makes sense. You can, you, you, you can, you can do the math on their losses. The first loss against Washington. Turnovers, penalties, injuries. The second loss on the season. Jalen Hurts wasn't there. Dallas Cowboys on the road. Gardner Minshew turns the ball over three times or four times, however you want to call it. You can make sense of that. The third loss on the season, New Orleans Saints. Coaches didn't really carve out a game plan for Patrick Mahomes specifically. Defense played well. Offense couldn't get off the ground. Gardner Minshew looked lim limited, more limited than we've ever seen him. So you can make sense out of most of these losses for the most part, right? And some people say we should have beat the Saints. Fair enough. I agree. We should have beat them. I expected us to beat them. But the energy didn't feel right. Nonetheless, though, nonetheless, they made it this far, 14th year in the season, number one seed, blows out the New York Giants, blows out the San Francisco 49ers, regardless of how people want to put an asterisk next to, the, next to the victory, they blew them out and they beat them up. So now they face off against the Kansas City Chiefs, a team that's much more is much more finesse than physicality. This is a game where the Philadelphia Eagles have to impose their will. They had to impose everything that they have onto the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't think the Kansas City Chiefs can run with the Philadelphia Eagles for four complete quarters from a physicality perspective. You see, I, could get, I, I can get into the nitty-gritty of the numbers and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, we can we can, we can spend all day doing, you know, doing the math game and talking about uh, percentages and all that kind of stuff. I'm I'm we're we're, we're going to talk about what our eyes see today. We're going to talk about what our eyes see. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the analytics, we forget what our eyes are telling us. And my eyes tell me the Philadelphia Eagles are a significantly more physical team than the Kansas City Chiefs. Right or wrong, people. As a matter of fact, the San Francisco 49ers thought we were pretenders. They didn't think we were as physical as them. They had a rude awakening. You still have some 49ers, Brennan Ayuk to be specific, doubting this Eagles defense, calling us frauds. Guys like Julian Love calling Nick Sirianni a fraud. Earlier in the season, Michael, Pro Michael Parsons called Jalen Hurts a fraud. Essentially, not verbatim, but essentially called them a fraud. You got a lot of people who think the Eagles and Jalen Hurts are a fraud. Now, could that just be me embodying the underdog mentality of Philadelphia? I was born and raised here, you guys. Born and raised in North Philadelphia. I understand this city. I've lived this city. I've bled in this city. I've cried in this city. I've celebrated in this city. Are we true underdogs? Like I said, don't believe the odds makers. The odds makers say the Eagles are the favorites. That's what they say. But what do they believe? It's a difference. It's a difference. What do you believe about your Philadelphia Eagles? Once again, you guys are locked in on Good Morning NFC East. Smash that like button here. We're going up today. We're going to have some fun this week. Mark Farzetta coming up in a few minutes. But what do you believe about your Philadelphia Eagles, Philadelphia? Eagles fans all over the nation, all over the world. What do you believe? What do your eyes tell you? My eyes tell me the Eagles have the most dominant pass rush in the NFL. My eyes tell me the Eagles have the most dominant offensive line in the NFL. The most dominant rushing attack. The most dynamic. I don't see how the Chiefs can stop this Eagles offense on a regular basis. When they're so dynamic, when they have so many ways to beat you. The Chiefs, we know how they need to win. It's, it's rather simple how they need to win. They need Patrick Mahomes to play the game of all games. They need Patrick Mahomes to be lights out. Right? And again, Jalen Hurts, he hasn't been 
stellar in the playoffs, but he hasn't really had to be, right? I know a lot of people want to say Jalen Hurts didn't have a good game in the Giants game. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Because the reality is, the reality is in that Giants game, Jalen Hurts completed 66% of his passes, going 16 for 24, 154 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, also had a rushing touchdown. So if a man is efficient, completes 66% of his passes, is only sacked one time, gives you three touchdowns, two in the air, one on the ground, how is that a bad game? When you blowing the doors off of somebody's barn to the point where you don't even got to pass the ball anymore, how is that a bad game? Wicked one. He says, we can't have all the success this year being so good to just come up empty. We have to run this. And the Chiefs only have Mahomes and Kelsey. No one else scares me. We hold Kelsey and that's game. You might be on to something, wicked one. You might be on to something. Dominique Barrett, welcome to the show. He thinks Jalen's going to go for over 300 yards passing and three passing touchdowns. I like those odds. I like those numbers. But like I said, you guys, I understand that what the odds makers are saying, the odds makers are telling you. The Eagles are the favorites, the slight favorite, the point and a half favorite. I haven't looked at it in quite some time. But the last time I checked, the Eagles were a one and a half point favorite, I think. I think. I think I think it started out at two and a half, but it became one and a half. And I'm not even a betting guy. I don't really get into the overs and unders and the line. I'm not, I'm not a betting man. You know what I'm saying? I like to keep my money. <laughs> you judge by how much you keep, but not, not how much you spend. But the odds makers may say one thing. They may say the Eagles are the favorite, but what do they believe? And I promise you, I believe that most people are expecting Jalen Hurts and the Eagles to fumble the bag. They're expecting Patrick Mahomes to be special. And that's what he has to be. He has to be special. But just as Jalen Hurts has to be special, just as Patrick Mahomes has to be special, I need my man Mark Farzetta to come in here and be special. And that's what I fully expect for him to be. Mark Farzetta from the Farzy Show also from the Jacob Sports pregame and halftime show, sometimes the postgame show. Man, Mark Farzetta does an amazing job at covering his game. He does an amazing job at keeping you guys engaged. He just has a luster about the way he does this thing. He has a glimmer. He has a shimmer. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe it's the beard. Is he bold? Is he beautiful? Is he young or is he restless? I don't know, but we're going to find out after the break, you guys. You're locked in on Good Morning NFC East. I'm your guest host, Tone shows the second, filling in for my man, Jeff Kerr, who's holding it down in Glendale, Arizona. We're going to Super Bowl 57, you guys. As a matter of fact, we're already here, and no one can take this from you. We'll be right back after the break. 